moment is here, you can stop your search, it's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and there's one week left from when you're listening to this to go ahead and back Gemini Jump. It's going to close on Friday, November 5th, and this is a comic uh, made by Larry King. He's done indie comics for a while. He's got a pretty cool little style, a little very unique, and we did a comic that tried to make it as cheap as humanly possible. Ten bucks, you get the comic, and that includes the shipping, and we're going to include some free stuff in there, uh, but you can also get the digital copy and all the rest, so hope you uh, hope you enjoy the comic. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and this is a tiny little story that's pretty much going to go under the radar of, uh, of, of everywhere. Uh, but it's it's interesting in the sense that you've heard on this channel before, if you agree or disagree, but one of the things I've said, you know, hands down, the biggest challenge the comic industry faces is getting comics more places. That they've got to be in more more shops, they've got to be more, they've got to be more. Um, if you look at, and, and again, historically... When comics books were at the newsstand, meaning grocery stores, gas stations, all these places during the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, even some of the 90s, uh, the comic books were robust. They were selling a lot more. Now, granted, and this is always what the detractors throw in, a lot of those comics weren't selling through. Those comics were actually, uh, you know, they were being returned. So if, you know, whatever wasn't sold at the end of the month, taken into the back, cover ripped off as proof of uh, sale, sent back credit comes back to the uh, whatever chain it, it happens to be that was selling it. That's how the newsstand worked. If, if right now you're listening, by the way, and you're like, wait, wait, what? Tear off the cover. What? Um, just, you know, there. go back. There's uh, in my archive search, search perch, and there is, uh, you know, a description of what was going on in the newsstand. We go all the way through it. Um, but it's absolutely true. You know, when you talk about, and, and some people have brought up, well, comic books were selling 400,000 copies of a book. Well, the reality is maybe they were selling 200,000. There's a massive amount of comics being returned. It wasn't anywhere close to sell through. Right now, and I know this also kind of bucks with some things you might have heard, uh, the direct market in the comic shop is selling through a lot better than it did at the newsstand. And why is that? Because retailers don't have returnability. So if they get stuck with extra stock, it's because they overordered and they take great pains not to do that again because it's coming out of their pocket and they have no way to reclaim it. But back when it was at the newsstand, grocery stores, they could actually return things, so they didn't care that much. It was just big volumes. But despite all of that, even if you take away the returnability, and it was a big number, comic books were still selling far more than today. Why? Well, common sense. Not No, not because of the artists, not because of the writers, not because Superboy is gay, but because uh, they were in more places. If products in more places, it's going to be seen by more people. It's increasing the chances somebody is going to buy it. It becomes a ubiquitous product, and, and it's just it's healthier overall. As a side effect, by the way, comic books tended to be a little bit less, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, gimmick-based. Because you were selling into all these stores, you had that built-in platform in the audience. You didn't need to spike a number for a smaller location like you do today in the direct market. And so you, you saw less kind of silly... Uh, you know, radical status quo changes happening, you know, every other month because there was this, uh, this you know, ongoing business that had to be protected. But regardless, uh, in my view, the fact that comic books are sold in a very small channel today, comic shops, is the big problem. It's a big problem for everyone. It's a big problem for the publishers. I think it's a big problem for the content of the comic. It's also a big problem for the comic shops, because the 90s, when you did have the comic book uh, shop boom before the bust, but even a lot of the strength of comic shops in the direct market in the 2000s, I would argue even to some extent today, because right now comic shops are making money. Yes, they're making some money off of new comics, but they're also making a lot of money off back issues. The reason why they're making that money today is because collectors who really got their start during the days of the newsstand are now you know, seeking out comics and buying them. That number is dwindling. In that regard, the comic publishers, comic creators who say we have to go and find a new audience, they are correct. This audience is slowly shrinking. Maybe not so slowly as uh, the comic publishers make radical changes to their books that drive them away, but it's shrinking. What would help? Getting comic books back into more places. And for a long time, that's been uh, 
hey, we'll get on digital, and then anyone with an iPhone and iPad will be able to get to comics. Sounds great, except people aren't finding it there, and the, the big players involved aren't really doing a lot to it. I mean, you look at Comixology, by the way. Even though they did this Scott Tober, and they put a lot of money in there, the marketing is, is really slim. In many ways, they're only marketing to the audience they already have. They're not going out trying to get new customers. And from the outside looking in, I'm pretty dis- disappointed. I, I, if I was Snyder, I would think, uh, you know, I, they, they're, not, they're not pushing this stuff out. Not anywhere close to as much as you would expect. But this is where this story becomes interesting. So here's a, a uh, well, I mean, a Cracker Barrel. Have you ever heard of Cracker Barrel? Um, sounds kind of racist, doesn't it? I'm just, it's not, it's a restaurant. Um, and it has nothing to do with any of that, but I, I all, it's always funny. Uh, if you're out with friends and they do not know about this place, they're like, let's go to the Cracker Barrel. It's like, you know, you get, you get a sideways look uh, That's especially if you, if you don't live in a location where Cracker Barrel is, uh, you know, is, is a restaurant people are familiar with here on the West coast, you say Cracker Barrel and it doesn't, doesn't sound quite right. Anyway, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's a, it's a, I, I don't know what, what is, what, how would you describe Cracker Barrel? It's like Golden Corral or uh, it's, it, I don't know. It's, it's like Red Robin, but not with burgers, but with other things. I mean, it's just, it's just, a, it's a chain that serves food. It, it's not the best food. It's not the worst food. It's food. Um, but one thing that Cracker Barrel has, because it's themed up like a kind of an old, uh, I don't know, like a minor uh, kind of environment, like a, you know, gold rush boom type. That's kind of the the theme of this place. Um, They have a gift shop, usually inside, I think always actually inside the Cracker Barrel. And they sell, you know, plushies and, you know, kind of little cheap plastic cylinders with fake gold in there and that kind of stuff. And uh, what are they going to be doing? Well, they announced that they're going to start selling comics inside the Cracker Barrel um, in their gift shop. And the company that's, uh, who do you think the company is that's going to work with them, right? Marvel, right? No, not Marvel. DC? No, not DC. Tokyo Pop. All right. Tokyo Pop. Tokyo Pop that, that uh, licenses various things, uh, many cases licenses manga and brings it over. Tokyo Pop uh, will be doing a, uh, a Nightmare Before Christmas manga adaptation. All right, so let's kind of talk. <laughs> you have to unpack all the different pieces here. So you've got a a movie, old Disney movie, Nightmare Before Christmas. The license to that movie goes over to Japan. A manga is made by Yun Asuka. The manga is being then picked up by Tokyo Pop, a uh, U.S. company, and then is going to be distributed inside of the Cracker Barrel. Now, that's that's almost hysterical if you just think about <laughs> <laughs> that, that entire chain of what's going on. Um, but it makes sense. So they're going to be basically doing this for the, you know, now for, you know, the early Halloween season through uh, Christmas. And that is, uh, you know, that's, that's what they have going on. So uh, this is a very good idea. And why is this a good idea? Uh, first off, one of the things I've said in the past is we need to recreate the newsstand, but that's going to be kind of tricky to do because, you know, be, the shopping behavior has changed. Parents are no longer really kind of keen on going into the grocery store, plopping their kids down at the magazine section, spending 30 minutes shopping for groceries and then picking them back up again. There's too much concern about, you know, uh, danger to your child to just do that. Uh, so, and, and nobody goes into the gas station anymore. There is a, there certainly is a convenience store, but it's, uh, most people pay at the pump and get the hell out. They don't, they don't, it's not a heavily trafficked location. So we've got to find more places to sell comics. Now, obviously, you know, DC has tried their experiments with Walmart. Um, right now we see, uh, Viz doing a hell of a lot of business at Target, uh, where they're, they're supplying manga there and everything else. And you're seeing the newsstand start to come back. But where it's coming back is almost entirely manga. Uh, Target, like as I said, Walmart did the 80-page uh, DC Giants thing, and that was that was cool. Uh, but if you go to the books area, they are selling uh, My Hero Academia and a bunch of titles there. If you go to Target, they've got Chainsaw Man and One Punch Man and a whole now a growing shelf of manga that is developing there and it's selling extremely well. Target in a statement said that they're very happy and they plan to expand because the manga is selling. Who isn't there? Well, Marvel, 
DC image. I, that's not entirely fair, by the way. If you go to the kids section, you will see kind of young adult stuff uh, from Marvel uh, and DC from time to time. You'll see like uh, Raven Loves Beast Boy and this new Miles Morales uh, made for kids YA thing is often in these places. But the newsstand is coming back up uh, very, very slowly. But it's coming back largely driven by manga. Now, maybe the U.S. companies can get in there and, and piggyback off that. But I think, you know, first off, not many restaurants have gift shops. However, that's pretty genius in a way. You're, notice they're not putting, uh, Tokyo Pop's not putting 20 comics there. They do mention in uh, their statement that they will plan to keep this relationship going. And I think it's clever because what happens, family goes into the restaurant. Maybe there's a five-minute wait or something to get to the table. Maybe longer. Who knows? The gift shop is uh, typically frequented by kids. They go in there and they, they want to look for something while they're waiting for their table. They don't just want to sit you know, in the lobby with their mask on waiting to get seated. Um, and so they go into the gift shop. And a, the idea of a comic book there is pretty brilliant. Um, there, you know, it's something to read and look at, and maybe there's crayons at the table, maybe even draw in. I know that would horrify a lot of comic collectors, but again, your, your market here is kids getting them hooked on this medium. So let them color the pages. I mean, who the hell knows, but this is smart. Um, it's a product that I think would be bought there. It's a product that parents are going to feel more good about. They're giving, you know, they're like, Oh, my kid wants to read. I mean, sure. It's a comic book. There's pictures there too, but, but read it makes sense. It's something that helps. And for Tokyo pop who Tokyo pop is usually very smart about in their book, they make sure to advertise the other books they have going. So it's, it's, it's almost entirely bait kid goes in there. They need something to do while they're waiting for their table, waiting for their food to arrive. They buy a comic book, relatively cheap, um, cheaper than most of the merchandise. And this is another area where even if the comic book is, you know, whatever it is, three ninety nine, I I didn't see the price of what they're planning to do here. I wonder if that uh, looks like two ninety nine. Okay, so three bucks, um, you know, is still expensive as a comic book. However, when it's in a gift shop with like ten dollar plushy toys and twenty dollar little action figure sets. Suddenly, this now is a cheaper item in that venue. And if the kid's going back to the table and they're reading it, in the back of the comic, there's easy ways to get more Tokyo Pop content, whether it's their digital app, which they promote there, or other books and where they can find them to order. This is just smart. Now, this isn't going to change the world. It's not like uh, you know putting comic books in Cracker Barrel is suddenly going to transform the comic industry. But this is a good start. This is the right approach. This is going to... Uh, anything that's getting comic books into a place where they haven't been or where they're, they're not, you know, they, maybe they used to be, but they're not today. Um, it's, it's good news. Um, d increasing the distribution is good news. Aiming at kids. So you get this kind of lifelong reader built up is, is smart. This is smart. The fact that it's coming from a place like Tokyo pop is kind of sad. Again, I, if you're Disney, uh, Marvel, I, I mean, tons of content there. Why isn't DC putting Batman comics there? I mean, I, but the other part of this too, in fairness, is that this nightmare before Christmas, it's a brand people know it's a one and done story. Most likely I, I haven't read it. So maybe it's, it ends on a cliffhanger and we, we learn that, I don't know, the mayor of uh, Halloween town is bisexual. I, I, maybe that's in this comic. I don't know, but most likely this is a one and done kind of adaptation manga style of this book. Cool. Um, that's, uh, that's an easy evergreen product. They can put it on the shelf. They don't have to worry about replacing it a month later. And if this relationship does continue and Tokyo pop can continue to feed this, they're going to get their brand out there. No, it's, it's, it's smart moves. I love this. I love ex things, seeing things like this, seeing people pushing, but, uh, again, I, where's, you know, Marvel DC, come on, <laughs> where are you? Anyway, let me know what you think. Do you go to Cracker Barrel? Um, let me know if you've seen this in the shop and, and what you think of this, where else could comics go? Uh, interested to get your opinions on that. Uh, it's fun to see how the industry is changing. Thanks for listening.